Thank you so much for joining us today, Matthew. Thanks, Valerie. It's great to be with you. I'm so excited about this book, Things We Bury. Now, if listeners haven't got a copy for themselves yet, tell us what it's about. Okay, thanks. Things We Bury is a contemporary family drama. It's set in regional Victoria, and it's about three siblings who travel back to their hometown after their dad is badly injured in a car crash um, that leaves him in hospital in a coma. But when they get there, they find out that the crash wasn't an accident and that their dad had deliberately ran himself off the road. Um, so the book kind of follows these three siblings as they work through this revelation about their dad. And of course, they can't ask him about it because he's in a coma. Um, so it's that. And then a, a kind of host of long buried secrets um, that being back in their hometown together bring to the surface. Now, it's a great premise and it gets you in straight away because it gets you into the family straight away. So tell us, tell us why, and, and for somebody who's an only child and who <laughs> isn't even that interested in the family, family dynamics, it just got me in, right? So um, before we move into how you, about the characterization and about how everything unfolded, how did you come up with this idea? <laughs> Um, well, I guess it was a combination of two things. I mean, firstly, I love this kind of story. You know, I, I don't know if you'd call it a subgenre, but these stories where families um, with grown kids are kind of thrust together into a confined environment for a set period of time um, and always things come up. They always have to deal with things. So I'm thinking of books like um, This Is Where I Leave You and um, films like The Family Stone and, and Dan in Real Life where these families are all, all together and, you know, kind of all hell breaks loose because stuff comes out. Um, I love that kind of setting. So I wanted to do that. Um, that was one thing. And the other thing, I guess, um, I'm really interested in mental health. So I work with that area a lot in my freelance writing and editing work. Um, and so that was kind of the second element that I really wanted to in include. Um, but I knew for the, for the, for the book, there had to be a trigger, you know, like something, something had to force them to start facing up to sort of all this stuff in their, in their past. And um, that's when, the dad's kind of suicide attempt came in as that kind of catalyst to get them all reflecting on their lives of a family and how well they know each other and don't know each other and kind of stuff that they might have seen in each other that they didn't recognize or, or want to recognize. So you live in Melbourne, but this book is set in a small town. So tell me why you picked that setting and if you based it on a real town. Um, I picked this, I love small town stories. You know, I, I love anything that's set in a confined environment because it kind of creates a combustion chamber in a way, like, you know, whether it's set in a retirement village or in a boarding school or any kind of confined environment where people feel like they, in a sense, can't escape and that kind of everyone knows what's going on. And so small towns are perfect for that. Um, and it is in, in my head, it's, it's Benella, which is a, um, which is a town in um, Victoria's high country. It's not called Benella in the book. Um, but if you, if you, there's lots of clues in there to sort of orient where it is, if, if you know the area. In geography um, and little things. Yeah. It, it's, exactly it's right. Um, near Wangaratta. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I mean, when you, when I describe the town in the book, it's a bit different. Like, so this Pent, which is the town in the book has a, has a town square. Um, has, has kind of a big square, which is a central part of, of the book, which um, Benella doesn't have. Um, Benella does have a lake, but it's, it's a bit different. Um, but yeah, I did, I did visit there. I had, I had visited there already when I, when I was kind of picturing this town in my book. And then, um, and then while I was writing it, I did go back there a few times and just try to get a bit more of, of a sense of it. And so be, before we delve into the book itself, I just want to give listeners uh, some context. So can you tell us, so you, you have already written a book for younger readers. So yes. just tell us briefly about that, but also tell us about your day job. Okay. So in my, yeah, in my day job, I'm, I work as a freelance writer and editor. I've been doing that since 2006. So I worked in, um, I worked in communication roles before that. So I worked with a, with a film video production company and then I worked in corporate communications for a government department. So for the health department. So I left the health department, um, and started freelancing and, um, 
I do a lot of, well, in the beginning, it's changed a bit over the years, but in the beginning, I did a lot of, um, a lot of writing and a lot of ghost writing. I ghost wrote books for people um, in all, it's all different kinds of area, like business books, like you do. Um, but I, I also, um, I, I think now most of my focus is, is, is on health. So as I said, I still work for the Department of Health and I, I work for um, places like Beyond Blue and Cancer Council and other health related organizations. Um, and there's been a lot of focus on mental health and I've, <clears throat> over the last probably 10 years, especially. And so did, you really want, my mind. did you always want to write fiction? Like, and, and what ended up, how, how did you end up writing the, the book for younger, for younger readers? Well, um, I wasn't a big reader as a kid, I have to say, which is unusual for an author. Um, but I had this idea that I wanted to write a, a book probably maybe when I was kind of approaching 30, I guess. And um, I started trying to write it and I couldn't find what I know now is my voice. I couldn't find my voice because I hadn't been a big reader. Um, I had ideas for this story and I was trying to write it, but I just didn't, I just, you know, I hadn't really read much since high school. And um, so I started reading a lot more. Um, and I actually started writing the first three manuscripts I wrote were um, crime fiction for adults. Um, and I kind of got increasingly better with each one. And, um, by the third one, I had, I had a publisher that was interested. Um, but then I had this idea for this YA book and, um, I thought that because of the story idea, I thought it would best be told from a teenager's point of view. So it kind of automatically becomes YA. I didn't intend on writing a YA. Um, and I just found it, um, it suited me really well. Um, I got into the voice easily. I felt, and, um, so yeah, I wrote that book. Um, and then I've written, I've, I'm still writing YA. Um, but then I had the idea for things we bury and I wanted to write that. And, um, I really, it was, it was different because it's, it's felt more like my own voice, you know, cause the, the characters are more like my age. Mm. Um, and in some ways it felt easier. Um, but then in other ways it's, it was more challenging, but, um, but yeah, I, I, I would like to continue to write both. Yes. So you write under Matt Davies for YA yes. and you write under Matthew Ryan Davies yes. for adult to, to make that distinction. Um, yes. You would like to write both. You also have a day job. Tell me when you fit this in. <laughs> Um, well, I fit it. I, I guess I fit it around the, the day job. I mean, I would love to be able to say that I have this kind of lifestyle, like, you know, I'm in, in Stephen King's book in, on writing, he talks about, he writes in the morning, he goes for a, a walk, you know, in the middle of the day, and then he reads in the afternoon. That sounds perfect to me. Perfect, perfect. But, you know, I have to feed my children, so I have to work. <laughs> um, so, you know, there are, you know, there's always deadlines with the freelancing work, as you know. So um, I always make sure I meet those. Um, I do, I do try to write in the morning if I can, like, especially like I'm, I'm writing a, another book at the moment. Um, but I've, I've kind of at the end of the first draft, so I'm editing now. So it's different, but when I'm, um, when I'm writing the first draft, I try to get a few hours in the morning. Like what time? Um, like what, just at the start when I, when I get, so when I, I get up, you know, do whatever in the morning, eat breakfast, whatever. And then I sit down and I try to get a few, few hours done when I'm freshest, um, that's and quite I, a chunk, a few hours. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I try to, and I aim, for, I aim for a thousand words. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, just because I want to I wanna see some, some progress. Because when you're in that drafting stage, it's more, you know, like I'm, I'm thinking outside of those times and I'm kind of mm. planning outside of those times because I, I am sort of a, a planner. I, I, I want to be a planner. I like to plan <laughs> and I try to plan, but it um, doesn't always work out that way. Um, so I sort of know what I'm writing for the day. And then I can, when I, when I've got those two hours in the morning, I, I can sit down and, and just write because I've been doing the thinking outside of that time. And I've been doing the planning outside of that time. Yeah. So everyone's start of the day is different. So what time of day is, do you actually write? What, from what time? Well, outside of COVID time, my family would, would, you know, we'd all be sort of here in the morning and everyone go off to their things, school, uni, work, whatever it was. Um, and then, so by sort of eight thirty, nine o'clock, the house is quiet. I sit down and I start to work, you know, I, it's, it's a work day. I work from mm -hmm. nine to five. Um, now it's a bit different. My son's at uni, so he's not kind of, kind of keeping regular hours and my daughter works from home some days. So it's, it's a bit, um, it's a bit all over the place, but, um, 
but yeah, I'm definitely, usually I get up and I do some exercise, go for a walk, listen to a podcast in the morning, <laughs> get my head into it. Um, just get my, get, get moving, I guess. Um, and then, you know, I, I'm always sitting down by, by nine o'clock. Um, and then, yeah, probably finishing around lunchtime if I'm, if I'm writing. I mean, I don't write every day. I can't write every day. I just don't have the time. And then, um, you know, if, I'm, if I've had a, a busy day with work, by the end of the day, I'm, I, I don't want to keep, keep writing. Um, mm. But, I, you know, it's my own business. I'm a freelancer. I treat every day as a day. You know, I don't sort of have weekdays and weekends. If I want to sit down and do some work to catch up on the, you know, to sort of get ahead of the week on it. Um, for the Monday, then I'll, then I'll work on the weekend. I don't look at it as, you know, this is time I have to set aside for this or that. And, you know, being a freelancer, I can do, you know, it was great when the kids were little, you know, I could go on the school excursions and things like that. And, you know, you can do things you need to do during the day, go to the bank or whatever, that sort of stuff. Mm. You know, I, I just treat my days as, as just all just time, you know? Mm. Um, but, um, but now that I'm, I'm, I'm writing, uh, like my second adult book, and I do have a, a deadline. Um, I've had to force myself to, for the first time ever, to 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 just do it. I have to I have to sit down and do yes. it. Yes, is that a different kind of pressure? Because presumably, with your first couple of books, you wrote it in your own time. There wasn't a deadline because you needed the full manuscript to get the deal, so to speak, with the publisher. Yes. But now the publisher yep. obviously knows and loves your incredible writing and your storytelling. They are saying we want the book, the, the next manuscript yes. by this yes. date. So yeah. does it A, stress you out, but B, kind of like sometimes when people have that pressure, it's like stage fright, right? They can't perform. <laughs> so what's it like for you now that you've got that pressure? Um, well, it's, it's, it's kind of good. I mean, I feel when I think about it, I think how lucky am I that I have um, mm -hmm. an opportunity to write, to write another book. Um, it, on the one hand, um, it was daunting at the start because I'd never, I, ha I had kind of a year to write the next one and I'd never, I'd never written a book in a year because exactly like you said, you know, no one's waiting for it. You're just tinkering around. And um, so I think the pressure has been good for me. Um, I do worry sometimes that I haven't, you know, because when, when, when you spend three or, you know, two, three, four years writing a book, you know, lots of mm. people are looking at it. You have lots of time to think about it. You have lots of time to go back and really uh, I kind of delve into it. And so I feel like I'm missing out on that this time, but I know that my publisher, you know, when I work with them, when I work with the editors, we will get into all of those things, you know, like things that I've, you know, that I need to go into a bit deeper or, or whatever. So it, it, it will all work out but at the start it was a bit like oh I've got to write a book in a year and you know because you know when you're when you're pitching for the first time when when the publishers don't know you obviously you you want to make it as as polished as polished as polished as it can be um so yeah so my previous my previous submissions have been as I said read by lots of people you know they've been looked at by my writing group and all those things and I've worked on them for years and um and I actually mentioned this to my publisher about, about, you know, I don't know how I'm going to go just writing it in a year and how deep I'm going to be able to get into it if I'm, you know, and he said, you know, you'll be surprised that now you've been through this process a couple of times and with the editing and all that, that it will, it will come easier. Um, and yeah. And I think uh, in some respects it, it is, you know, people, people often say that, you know, writing a book never gets easier, but <laughs> there are certain aspects of it to do, you know, mm -mm. Well, one of the things is you said that you are kind of a planner or you want to be a planner. So let's talk about this particular book and about how you planned that. So when you started, you knew that it was going to be a family drama, that you knew presumably there was going to be some siblings who came together. And I guess you had the inciting incident. Like, tell us about yes. how you thought about the rest of the book. Did it come to you all at once? <laughs> Did it come to you over you know, a period of time, did you actually know what was going to happen by the end? Tell us about the entire planning process and how you, how on a practical level, you actually noted down your, your well, plot points really when you thought of them. Yeah. Well, as I said, I like to plan, you know, I like, I, I love the, I love that the start of the process where you have this idea for a book, you think, oh my God, it can be this and it can be this and it can be so great. And there's nothing wrong with it yet because you haven't started writing. There's, you know, it, it's in your mind, it's perfect, you know? And, um, 
So I like to try to sit down and sort of start to, okay, so as you said, the inciting incident, this happens. And then, you know, then maybe this can happen then this can happen and this can happen, but I can, I can only, I find that I can only plan to a point because I don't know the characters well enough to be able to know what they're going to do. I mean, I have a general idea of, I want this to, you know, thematically, uh, this is what I want the book to be about. And this is what I want readers to come away with. And this is kind of where I want it to end. So what I tend to do is I, you know, I plan, I use a spreadsheet, I plan out scenes. Um, cause I don't sort of write in chapters. I write in scenes. Um, so I plan out scenes and I start to write and I, I, and I don't always start from the start. Um, sometimes I'll just start writing, you know, scenes that are vivid in my mind. And then I'll, um, so I'll start writing those just till I start to get to know the characters and their voices and that kind of thing. Cause this book has three, um, point of view characters. So they're, mm. you know, different voices, different perspectives. Um, so I started thinking about all this in about, uh, well, in 2017, um, 2018, I started writing it. I was, um, I was kind of getting into it, but, you know, I was writing other stuff at the same time and I wasn't really committing to it. Um, and then 2019, I thought, no, I just need to finish this book. I've been mucking around with it for too long. I just need to get it finished. So um, I said to my writing group, you know, rather than me bringing shorter pieces to the group every month, um, would it be okay if I just didn't submit anything this year and I give it to you right at the end? Um, and then you guys read it over that summer break, read the whole thing over the summer break. And then when we come back in 2020, we can talk about it because I felt that would be much more valuable for me to look for them to look at the whole thing rather than just kind of bits. And you gave yourself a deadline. And I gave myself a deadline. Exactly. <laughs> so it was perfect for that. Um, so that's what happened. I, um, they, they read it over that period and um, we came back. Um, we didn't, we, we never meet in January, February. There was, you know, as people had things on. So we met at the beginning of March and, um, and there were problems <laughs> with it. <laughs> <laughs> there were lots of problems with it. Um, and I came away from that meeting thinking, do I, should I continue with this book or not? You know, like I know, I know what I want it to be in my mind and in my heart, but I don't know if I'm good enough to, to write that book. Um, and then literally the next week we were, we started getting lockdowns in Melbourne with COVID. Yeah. Um, and I thought, look, I, I've, I've worked on this for so long. I'm just gonna, I'm going to have another go at it. And, um, I started by taking out one of the um, point of view characters. So in the final book, there's three point of view characters, the three siblings. We also had the mum as a point of view character in the first oh. draft. So I took her out because she was kind of the one I was connecting with the, the least. And um, that it was 120,000 words came down to about 90,000. So that was good. Um, and then I just stripped it, stripped it down. I went back to basics and I looked at each character and kind of thought about, you know, what they want, what they need, and what scenes do I need to get them from, from A to B? Um, mm. So then I kept, I worked on it for a few more months, um, showed some people and was really happy and surprised to find that it was no longer terrible. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then I, um, and then I ended up pitching it um, at the end of that year, I pitched it to publishers. So at the end of 2020, I pitched it to publishers, but um, the, the second part of your question about, did it change? It, it, it did. Um, it's, it's, it's not the book that I had intended to write at the beginning. Um, so no spoilers, as you know, there's kind of a, a, a big incident, maybe. Don't talk about it. Don't talk about it. <laughs> I, I won't, I won't. I have 20, 25% of the way through and, um, which changes the direction of the book. And it was the direction that I, that I hadn't intended going, going on, but, um, yeah, uh, um, it just, I just kept coming back to it and I, I, it was kind of pushing me in one direction. So that's the, that's the way that, that, that the story ended up going. So let's talk about the characters because you said that in some cases you don't know what's where it was going to go because you didn't know your characters well enough at the time. And obviously you got to know your characters extremely well as you developed them. So I want to talk about that because the siblings um, are Josh and Jack and Dane and they are so real you know people well I feel felt like I know people like that or they're they're my plumber or they're my friend's friend or you know what I mean like I yes, I yes. felt like that's just like him anyway so in terms of developing those characters it sounds to me from what you've just said you developed a lot of them as you wrote how did you was it just a matter of writing or did you do some other process to fully flesh them out and give them a backstory and, you know, really get to know them. How did you develop them? 
Yeah, I did think about that a lot at the beginning. Um, I wanted each character to sort of represent thematically something in the story. Um, but then with a multiple perspective story, they, all, all those stories need to tie into the, to the bigger themes and the bigger, the, yeah. bigger, um, the bigger story. So that was, that was a challenge because when you're writing a multi-perspective book, it, it's like in, in this case, there's three, three characters and it's like you're writing three books, you know, so they all have their own stories. They all have their own trajectories, um, but they all need to tie in as well. There needs to be some kind of central conflict that's, that's pulling them all together as well. Um, so that was difficult, but, um, but yeah, I definitely, so, so as you said, the three siblings, the oldest one day, and I definitely had a, had an idea of what I wanted him to represent. Um, and then Jack, as you said, who's Jacinta, so she's a female, um, she's in the middle. Um, and then the youngest one, Josh and I, yeah, they were all sort of aspects of, 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 of family and looking at family in different ways, um, because they all see their own you know, their parents and that family and their own, you know, kids, they all see them sort of in different ways. And I wanted to present the three different perspectives of, you know, like, um, I guess this thing of what's going to make you happy as a person, is it fulfilling your own needs or for, or kind of fulfilling the wants of your family? Like what is mm. important? Whereas, you know, cause like Dane is really, um, he's, he's very loyal and he, he he's very, um, focused on, making his family proud of him and being you know being a, a good son and then um i wanted to have different perspectives with with jack and with josh um mm. they, they all sort of see those things in different like you know J josh treats his family very differently from the way that um from the way that um, dane does and jack has a very complicated relationship especially with her mother um so yeah i guess i wanted to i did think about it beforehand because i didn't want them to have all the same story i wanted them to have very yes. becoming at family from very different perspectives in terms of the dialogue the way each character speaks um uh, when you on on the page even if you didn't know that it was like there were no speech tags let's say or you didn't for some reason if you didn't know who it was the character when you read their dialogue you knew the character you knew who it was so did you do that consciously or did the dialogue just come out naturally because you knew her character so well, or did you think about certain things that they would say in the way that they would say it? Um, I don't know how consciously I did it. I guess, like you said, it's just getting to know the characters and, um, Jack, for example, is very blunt in the way she speaks. Um, and that's one of the things I love about writing, fam writing families and, and writing family stories is that, you know, you, you can be yourself around your family in a way that you might not be able to be with friends. Mm -hmm. And, um, I love, especially I loved writing this stuff between Jack and Josh, um, because they sort of add each other and, and they, um, they sort of tease each other a little bit. And, um, so I wanted to have some of those lighter moments because there are some pretty dark themes in this book and I wanted to have those lighter moments. And I think those two really, really provide them. And, um, but I think just knowing your characters, like, you know, you know, like the, the way that, mm -hmm. um, the way that the way that Dane looks at the way his siblings are living their lives, you mm. know, he he has one perspective, and then they have a, a different perspective, and that that creates conflict, and that's what you want in a book. You mentioned before that you your first three manuscripts, presumably unpublished ones, were yes. crime thrillers. So um, you obviously have some kind of, uh, you, you resonate with that genre. <laughs> um, uh, this story has the tension that it's kind of would also be in a crime thriller, even though it's, you know, not, um, not, you know, classified in that genre. Well, how did you maintain, what did you think of to maintain that tension? Because it keeps the reader going, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I wanted, I, I wanted there to sort of be a mystery element that was surrounding it. And that is, um, and that is, well, one of them is why, why the, the dad, um, got himself in such a position that he wanted to take mm, his own life. Mm. Um, I wanted that to be sort of threading through it. And one, one of the characters, Jack in particular, kind of makes it her mission to try to get to the bottom of that. And as I said, you know, he's in a, the dad's in a coma, so she can't ask him. Um, so that's why I wanted to, you know, as the author, keep him in a coma um, mm. because I didn't want her to be able to just go to him and say, what's going on, dad? I wanted her to be able to think about their family from a, from a dip, different perspective. Um, 
so uh, there was that and then they all have their own kind of issues that are that, that are going on um I mean, this is not a spoiler because it's on the it's on the back of the uh, back cover of the book. But Josh is dealing with a um, jo Josh mm -hmm. in the public eye. He's um, he's a host of a reality TV show, and there was a sexual harassment allegation on the set of his show, um, which closed down the show. Um, and so he has kind of been in hiding a bit because he's a very recognisable person. Um, and so he's kind of been hiding out in his apartment for the past three months and has now come to Pent because his dad has been in this um, in this car crash and he's sort of back out there and in, in the public a bit so he's dealing with that and then um dane is um dane dane the oldest one he works in the family business which is a construction business and with their dad out of action um he has to step in and take control of the business which he's not comfortable doing he doesn't want to do he doesn't want to work in the business um and when he's when he starts doing that and looking at the business from the kind of upper level he starts noticing some things that are not quite right um in the business and that's um and he's conflicted about that because he's loyal to his dad and um he's a very sort of honest person so what's going on in the business what's happening that's one sort of mystery um with with josh did he was he responsible for this sexual harassment allegation and then with jack um what happens with her this is also on the on the, on the back of the book so not a spoiler um she um when she comes home to pent to, to see her family um she tells them that she's engaged and they didn't even know she was seeing someone um mm. she, she's a very private person so um but then she's conflicted because she's not sure whether she actually wants to marry this this man and, and what are her reasons for wanting to settle down at this time in her life um so there's all sort of these questions about will they or won't they how, how this is going to turn out so those threads are sort of running through the book um which give it that i i, I hope that that extra tension that that keeps readers turning the pages and that was a conscious decision. Did you actually think at the start, oh, I need these sub threads to keep, the, to, to underpin, you know, with some other kind of tension throughout the story as well? Was that a conscious decision at the start or did it kind of just happen instinctively for you? It, it was, it, well, it was conscious. Like I, when I was writing, um, the, the the crime fiction when I started out because I, I started out writing that because I was reading a lot of that. That's what I like to read. Um, and I, I just couldn't imagine that, so like, like with crime fiction, you have something to hang the story off. There's this solving of the crime. That's everything comes from that. I mean, obviously you can go deep into characterization. You can do all these things, um, but there is something to hang it all off. There's an anchor there. Mm -hmm. And I, and I used to think, how, how can you just write a book from nothing when there's nothing like that? Like, like a relationship, for example, how do you know what's going to happen next? And you know, what, what's going to pull the reader along? I just couldn't imagine how you would do it. Um, but um, I mean, I, I, I hope I've gotten better at that um, and reading a lot more widely for, you know, a long time now. Um, I think I understand those things a lot better, but, um, but I, I don't know, it gives me a bit more a sense of security to have that sort of mystery element to running through mm. something, something to keep the something to keep the, the reader going. And also, you know, it's, it's a commercial fiction um, really so you know it sort of needs to have that and and that some of that stuff did get ramped up in the editing process um when my publisher said you know i think we need to i think we need to ramp this up a little, the, the tension or the conflict up a little bit more i think we need to put some little you know some more questions around this or around that um so those were sort of things that i i added at the at the editing stage um but no i was definitely conscious of it from the from the start this this book needs to be a mini series. <laughs> I think I've already cast it in my head. <laughs> they can film it in, you know, Castlemaine because everything seems to get filmed in Castlemaine or Clunes or something. So they'll the settings sorted. But I think this book needs to be a mini series. Tell me what was the most um, enjoyable thing about writing it and the most challenging thing about writing it. Um, well, the most enjoyable was probably, um, like I mentioned before, some of those conversations between Jack and Josh, you know, they were just, they're, just, they're so brash with each other and, um, and, you know, I really wanted to have those, those, those lighter sort of funny moments. Um, <clears throat> so that was, that was, that was fun. And I love, um, I love the editing process. So Really? Um, you know, I, oh, I <laughs> no one I says that. No, I <laughs> well, do. very few people say that. Why? <laughs> well, one because it's um, it's 
I want, you know, I want the book to be as good as it can. Well, and yeah. that's what that process is about. And I enjoy, you know, talking about my own writing and, <laughs> you know, and, and looking at, and, you know, when it's very specific, cause you know, you can read books on craft and all that sort of stuff and you can hear um, tips from people about writing, but when someone's talking about your own work, that that's, that's my professional development, you know, that's, you know, yeah. that's, that's how I get better when someone says to me, you know, that you do this a lot, or, you know, you tend to be doing this and, you know, it would be great if you maybe, you know, um, I heard a, a tip, um, I was listening to, to your podcast yesterday and the, and the tip from the author was about, you know, getting rid of the last sentence in a paragraph. Do you really need the last sentence or, do, you know, and, and having the editor point that out to you, um, to say, you know, you probably don't need this and, you know, it will be much stronger if you, if you don't do this, that that's, gold you know that's how you mm. learn that's how you that's how you get better so that's what I love but um but yeah the, diff the most difficult thing is is always the the, the the questioning for me you know like I'm not a good decision maker at at any time but and and writing a book is decision after decision after decision after decision you know how am I going to yes. say this where am I going to put this am I going to put this here or up here you know do I need to should I reveal this or shouldn't I reveal this you know like yeah. am I am I wait, made in, making the reader wait too long for this should I just put this bit you know that's all those things stress me out you know <laughs> <laughs> decision fatigue <laughs> yes oh god yeah yeah so that, that's probably the, the hardest bit just the questioning of myself you know like yes and that's where you know when you can show someone else and they can sort of say yep you're on the right track you know this is okay this is okay yes maybe it's got some problems or whatever and think about this and think about that um but that's when it starts to feel a bit better well you know it's a fantastic book when when you finish the book you already are hanging for the next book by the same author so congratulations matthew Thank you. let's Thank leave you. on what would be your um top three tips for aspiring writers who would love to be in a position where you are now thanks um well i reckon the first one is is got to be persistence um i mean i've been writing manuscripts like i said i've written quite a few um for 20 years and it took me 15 years to get published um so um you know and there's so much you know in obviously in those 15 years i just got better and, and and better and there's so much you can do to to improve your writing in terms of um you know reading like a writer and um listening to podcasts like like this one and um connecting with people in in, in the community and and you know things like that reading books on craft um Mm. but having said that i don't recommend kind of flogging a dead horse either you know if you've been trying to sell the same book for five years and it's just not happening that's pretty demoralizing you know it's time to move on to something else and, and start something fresh and you know maybe you'll maybe you'll publish that book later down the track maybe that won't be your first book but you know i would definitely recommend moving on and um and starting something something new um right. The other thing I would say is joining, join a writing group. Um, mm. That was one of the best things I ever did for my writing. And um, I was in a group for probably 10 years. And, um, you know, you, obviously the critiquing of your own work is really, really valuable, but it's also valuable just to be sitting around, you know, with other writers and looking at other people's work, because you may have read something and thought, you know, it's ah, something's not working here for me. I'm not sure what it is. And then you get in the group and someone says, you know, this is not working because of X, Y, Z. And then you're like, yes, that's what it is. And, mm. and you really learn from that. Um, so that's a great way to learn. And, and also just that having that little community of writers around you, you're all sort of um, in the trenches together yeah. um, and, you know, swapping war stories and, you know, that's really helpful. And, you know, because, there's so much rejection, you know, in, in this industry and to have other people around you to be able to, to kind of get you through those, those times. And there's a lot of them, um, I think it's a really, a really great thing. Um, the third thing I would probably say is just about writing advice is to just, you know, kind of take it with a grain of salt, take what works for you and what doesn't. I mean, you, you know, if you don't want to write every day, don't write every day. You know, if you don't want to count words, don't count words. If you want to plan, plan. If you want to pants, pants, you know, whatever works for you, it's all trial and error. Mm. Um, and that's what it's been like for me. I mean, I've tried something different in this book that I'm writing now. I've tried something completely different that I haven't done before. And it's just, just trying things and, and, and seeing what, what works for you and um, whatever gets the words on the page, you know, just because you've got to get those words on the page. Otherwise it's not going to be a book. Yeah, absolutely. Well, like I said, congratulations on Things We Bury. Um, it's 
I have no doubt we are going to see so many more from you and I cannot wait to read them. Thank you so much for your time today, Matthew. Oh, thanks, Valerie. It's been great talking to you.